From Creation Ministries International, you're listening to Creation.com's article podcast. The research and insights that give God the glory, refute evolution, and give you the answers to defend your faith. I'm Joseph Darnell. The impossibility of the evolution of flight is highlighted by the history of aviation. Some of the main historical milestones of technology and aviation are as follows. Sophisticated machinery developed between 1750 and 1800. The aerofoil was invented in 1804. Then ultra-light-wing structures developed in 1896. In 1902, the tail fin and tail rudder were invented. 1902 was also the year that we saw the first controlled gliding. The first controlled powered aeroplane came in 1903, and the first controlled powered helicopter in 1907. So the first controlled flying machine was produced in 1902, over 150 years after the beginning of the development of sophisticated machinery. This huge period of time was not due to any lack of desire to make a flying machine, but to the great difficulty engineers had in working out how to design a machine that could fly in a controlled manner. Even though many sophisticated machines and engines were developed in the Industrial Revolution between 1750 and 1800, there was very little progress in the development of man-made flying machines during this time. When the airfoil wing was developed in 1804, some people thought that it would not take long at all to produce a flying machine, because wings are the most obvious parts that are necessary for flight. However, there was a huge gap of 98 years before the first controlled glide was achieved in 1902. The length of time it took to develop flight is remarkable, considering how many talented scientists and engineers worked on this challenge. The reason why it took so long to develop the first controlled flying machine after the discovery of the airfoil is that flight also requires lightweight structures and flight control mechanisms. In addition, these mechanisms generally do not exist in non-flying machines, so engineers had to develop them from scratch. During the 19th century, engineers had to use great creativity and foresight to design novel lightweight structures that were suitable for flight. Engineers also demonstrated great intellectual skill in understanding the mechanics of flight and designing the necessary control mechanisms for a flying machine. Control of flight is very difficult, because a flying machine is completely unrestrained in the air, so there must be controls for producing the right orientation of the aircraft in all three axes of pitch, roll, and yaw. In the case of a car, it is only necessary to control the direction of the car on the road, the yaw angle. However, in the case of an aircraft, it can also roll from side to side and pitch up and down. An additional challenge with flight is that it is necessary to fly within certain limits of speed and orientation in order to maintain stability. In 1902, the Wright brothers made some famous inventions which enabled the successful development of the first properly controlled glider. Previous developers had designed light-wing structures and produced elevation control with hinged panels. However, no one had properly understood the problems of banking due to the different drag forces on the two wings. When the Wright brothers studied this problem, they set about designing a device to counteract the difference in drag. The device which they invented was the Telfin rudder, it was found to be a very good solution for producing a stabilizing force during a turn. The telfin rudder is analogous to the tail feathers of a bird and it is likely that the Wright brothers realized that birds used their tail feathers for control. The invention of the telfin rudder enabled the Wright brothers to carry out the first successful glide in 1902. In 1903, the Wright brothers went further when they produced the first controlled powered aircraft called the Flyer. Some biology textbooks claim that compared with powered flight, controlled gliding is a much simpler form of flight, easier to achieve. But this is not so, as confirmed by the fact that following the discovery of the airfoil, it took another 98 years to achieve the first controlled glide. Whereas after that, it only took one more year to attain the first powered flight. Now, let's explain how this is a problem for the theory of evolution right after a short break. Creationists notice God the Creator's handiwork in nature everywhere they look. 
It is evident to us that a masterful designer put our world together with purpose, and it's not only evident to laymen, but to experts too. Purposeful design is the sort of subject that Professor Stuart Burgess loves to explore. Stuart has taught engineering design at Cambridge University and Bristol University. He's also carried out spacecraft design for the European Space Agency. In Stuart's book, Hallmarks of Design, he presents that the design argument contends that design in nature reveals a designer. There is evident hallmarks of design in the light of the latest discoveries about the complexity and beauty of the natural world. His book features six clear hallmarks of design, over 30 diagrams, description of how the Earth is designed for mankind, and a description of the Creator's attributes. In review, Banner of Truth magazine said the book is compelling presentation of the evidence of design in the natural world. If you or someone you know is fascinated with design or engineering, then you'll want to get a copy of Hallmarks of Design to read and share. You'll find Hallmarks of Design at creation.com slash store. The delicate nature of flight is demonstrated by the number of accidents that occurred during flight trials in the 19th century. The Hamelin History of Aviation gives this account of a brave Frenchman who had a narrow escape. In 1857, Jean-Marie Labrie built an elegant glider whose shape was based on the albatrosses he had seen. After the glider had again been launched downhill, it once more carried Labrie for a short distance through the air, but as he had no means of control, he was unable to avoid a crash landing in which he broke his leg. This example illustrates the kinds of problems that land animals would experience if they attempted to experiment with flight. Experimenting with flight is a good way of becoming extinct, not of turning into a bird, bat, or pterosaur. Notice in this quotation how the designer had tried to copy the design of the albatross. Even though the engineers had the example of flying birds, it still took a man a long time to figure out how to design flying machines. If the theory of evolution were true, and it were possible to evolve flight by incremental steps, it should have been possible for engineers to get a land vehicle, such as a steam train, and evolve it step by step for flight. However, such a proposal is absurd because there is a fantastic difference between a land vehicle and an aircraft. In the same way, it is absurd to propose that a land-based creature gradually evolved into a flying creature. Considering the complexities of flight, it's really no surprise that it took over a century and a half after the development of the first machines in the Industrial Revolution to develop the first controlled flying machine. That it took so long, despite the application of much intelligence and engineering skill, is a powerful indication that flight could not have evolved by progressive selection of a series of random accidents. The Creation.com article podcast is hosted by me, Joseph Darnell. You'll find interesting related content in the links and show notes. This episode's article was adapted from the Stuart Burgess book, Hallmarks of Design, Evidence of Purposeful Design and Beauty in Nature. Be sure to listen to our other show, Creation.com Talk. Visit our events page to find a creationist giving a presentation in your local area. If you'd like to help us, become a monthly supporter at Creation.com slash donate. If you want the latest noteworthy research and news, subscribe to Creation Magazine. From everyone at Creation.com, thanks for listening.